What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 24. This, of course, is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. This show was created to show you guys things that you never knew existed. I wanted to deviate from our usual topics to show you something that I used to be so obsessed with when I was a kid. A cruise ship that ran aground in the early 2000s and has been there abandoned ever since. And that's the World Discoverer. Now obviously this isn't the largest cruise ship ever built, and definitely by its overall design and naval architecture, the ship was built in 1974 as the MS World Discoverer in a German shipyard. But as the ship was completed, it was sold to a company called Biwa Cruises, which operated out of Denmark. With the purchase, the ship was renamed to the Biwa Discoverer. It wasn't until the ship was sold to another company called Adventure Cruises Incorporated in 1976. The name of the ship was once again changed to its original, the World Discoverer. The ship was now registered in Singapore, and it began making charter cruises. With a long-term chartering by a rather large company, in 1987 the ship was sold to Society Expedition Cruises. In 1990, the ship was registered again to the country of Libya. Usually cruise lines do this so employment standards are lowered considerably, as if they were to be registered to say the UK or America. I'm looking at you, celebrity. Anyway, during this time, the ship's hull was refitted to withstand small ice impacts. This meant that the expedition ship could now be used in and around the Arctic Seas. Six years later, the ship underwent a major refurbishment. Now, the World Discoverer was rather quite small, only a little over 3,700 tons, and carried 170 passengers and an additional 80 crew. So in today's standards, the ship was rather quite limited in its size. However, to be fair, the ship was kind of built that way, as it was made to do smaller niche cruises to places that massive cruise ships couldn't. The vessel also wasn't that big on amenities either. It did have a lounge, a library, and an observation deck above the bridge, and a very, very small pool. Now, in the vessel's defense, this was a very small ship, and obviously, their target demographic is people who want to visit exotic locations and care more about the destination than the ship itself. The World Discoverer was also equipped with smaller dinghies, which would enable the ship to essentially park itself offshore and taxi people to land on its own. This was mostly used for Antarctic and Alaskan expeditions. So the Discoverer began traveling to Antarctica and southern Chile for very special expeditions. Then came April 30th, 2000. The World Discoverer was traveling in the Solomon Islands, which if you don't know, they're about 1100 miles northeast of Australia. The ship was traveling through the Sandfly Passage between two islands when at around 4 p.m. local time, the ship struck an uncharted reef. Immediately, the captain knew that the rock had pierced the ship's hull, and that they could not stay afloat at their current position. A distress call was sent and received at the capital of the Solomon Islands, and a ferry was dispatched to the damaged vessel. In an effort to save the ship, the captain brought the vessel into Roderick Bay, and deliberately grounded the ship as far as he could onto the shore to prevent the ship from completely sinking. This effort proved to be sort of effective, as the ship was completely evacuated and everyone off safely. The hull's damage was too extensive for any quick initial repairs, and with the ship listing at 20 degrees, the water took over the weight of the ship and the vessel had rested on the shore at a 46 degree list, partially submerged. Initially, the wreck was considered to be a complete loss, as the hull damage and the recovery of the ship would exceed the initial potential value. Following this, there were actually a few attempts to salvage the ship, however both attempts proved to be very ineffective. The ship was actually scheduled for an annual dry dock and renovation just 11 days after the incident. Honestly, no one is really to blame for this. The ship was traveling through a relatively unknown area to larger vessels, and to no one's fault the ship struck an uncharted rock. The Discoverer's crew was commended for their heroic and professional actions to ensure the safety of everyone on board. So what is going to happen to the ship? Well, like I said, there were several attempts to salvage the ship, however both were discarded. It didn't take long for the ship's interiors to be completely scrapped by the locals living on the island. The interior, equipment, and even the windows aboard the ship were completely removed by the locals. 
This left the vessel practically unsavable. The damage had been done, and at this point nothing could be done within reason to save the ship. So Society Expeditions left the ship there and literally renamed another one of their ships to the World Discover, which set sail in 2002. Evidently, just two years after that, Society Expeditions actually filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy and liquidated all of their assets. Ah, I get it? Liquid Darren. As for the original ship, well, with Society Explorations declaring bankruptcy, the ship now had no owner, and the ship was just left there completely abandoned. And the situation still remains true to this day, as the ship is sort of in this weird limbo and has no legitimate owner, and probably never will. I guess in some weird legal way it does probably end up to be owned by the government, but I'm not really sure. Which means this vessel will be left abandoned for as long as nature keeps it there which is actually a very unique and rare thing to happen. In just 15 years of the ship laying on the shores of the Solomon Island, it has naturally began to take the toll of seawater. Since the ship is in a bay and not necessarily affected by shoreline waves, the ship will actually probably remain there much longer than other shipwrecks. If it does remain to be there untouched, it could remain there for another 30 to 70 years. Allegedly, the locals have been begging the government to remove the ship, however, really, that does seem unlikely when you really think about the cost of that. It is pretty incredible and sort of eerie to see such a modernish cruise ship laying on the shores of a relatively remote island in the Pacific Ocean. With no owner, I honestly think this ship could be laying there for the rest of its existence. I know this is a bit of a shorter episode, but the purpose of the show Abandoned was to always present people with things that they never knew existed. I remember when I was younger and I literally used to be obsessed with cruise ships. Yes, I was a very cool kid. And I remember hearing about this ship and seeing it in like these sketchy blog posts back in like 2006. And I'm glad that I'm finally making a video on something I've been wanting to learn about for over a decade. It is a pretty amazing shipwreck, and definitely one of a kind. Definitely one of the most captivating and unique abandoned places in the world. Anyway guys, my name is Jake. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And thank you very much for watching.